Hi, I'm Lloyd DeWitt, the Irene Leach Curator of European Art and Chief Curator at the Chrysler Museum of Art. And it's my pleasure to take you on this virtual tour of Edvard Munch and the Cycle of Life, our current exhibition. It consists of 50 prints. They're on loan from the National Gallery of Art in Washington and the Epstein Family Foundation. It, now, of course, the scream has to be one of the most recognizable images in the history of art. It's a practically an emblem, an icon of the modern condition of anxiety and isolation. Yet we're going to look at what role it played in his career and in his life. Here is Munch. He's an, an already an elderly and successful artist by this point in the 1920s. He was born in, in 1863. And so by this point, he'd had many books written about him, successful exhibitions, great commissions. And yet, he still suffered from anxiety and depression. There were a lot of setbacks in his life. And he managed to, to push through them and thrive by framing these struggles as part of the cycle of life, which is a theme he developed. And we're going to look at that theme three ways. First, through his own life, his own career. Second, through the 1902 exhibition, the Freeze of Life, a grand project he conceived and showed in Berlin and elsewhere. And that's where we see the Scream and the Madonna being exhibited. And lastly, as part of the Alpha and Omega cycle that he did while he was undergoing treatment for alcoholism and depression in Copenhagen in 1908 and 1909. And he develops a story of the first man and woman, but it's really a story about his own life and his own uh, struggles. Because of the emphasis uh, and the opportunity to look at uh, mental health issues, we partnered uh, in this project with local mental health and addiction care providers uh, to point out resources to our visitors, but also to help better understand how to present this show to the public. Let's look at his own career. And there is, there's me in Happier Days uh, taking our wonderful docents on it, their tour of this exhibition. And here's an early print that Munch made. He was a great printmaker, very experimental. He worked in intaglio. He worked in just with the technique of this print and woodcut. He revived it uh, uh, decades before it became popular in Germany and uh, also lithography, a uh, very modern technique. Uh, and, but he broke a lot of the rules and it was constantly challenging how to be, make these uh, media more expressive. And he certainly does that in this print with uh, blurry dry point and adding a dirty plate tone through open bite on this uh, print. Yet it's a cafe in Berlin. He was very uh, successful as a student and he got uh, scholarships and funding to go to Paris and Berlin. And this kind of uh, goes against the image that we have of Munch from the screen, that he's isolated and uh, uh, not somebody who's w part of the art world. And yet he was completely part of the art world and the world of culture. Here, for instance, he does a program for the great Norwegian playwright Henrik Ibsen, whose modern style has often been compared to Munch's own. We see Ibsen's face there on the program and the beams of a coming from a lighthouse. It's a floating face, like a, almost like a, a religious icon. But we see the, the imagery of the screen once again. So instead of being an isolated guy, uh, Munch is completely plugged in. Now, in... 1902, he exhibits The Great Freeze of Life, uh, 23 paintings having to do with the four separate stages of the cycle of life that he, uh, that he developed. And uh, we see in the back wall there uh, the uh, paintings above, and then below that are the related prints, and they're closely connected to how we've put our prints in our exhibition. And we see the Madonna. And that introduces the, the freeze of life. The Madonna is the opposite of what you'd expect from the tradition of the Virgin Mary in art. She's a, a sensual woman. This is a, a woman who uh, is free and open. And yet he's arranged the page like a, a medieval manuscript with a margin around it. But that margin doesn't have flowers. It has a fetus and, and sperm uh, floating around it. So he anchors the whole story of the Virgin Mary and, and, and the Madonna as part of the cycle of life, the seeds, literally the seeds of love. So join me for the subsequent uh, videos in this uh, tour, which will go into the next stages of the great project of the freeze of life.